Number 49. Derive this thing for the range of a projectile on level ground by finding the time at which y becomes zero and substituting this value for t into the expression for that and noting that the range is the same thing. Okay, let's just draw a quick system, coordinate system. Here we'll have a projectile, all right. So there it's being shot uh, with some angle. What's it gonna travel like? It's gonna look something like this, right, parabolic. It's eventually gonna hit the ground. So let's call this my initial state. Let's call this my final state. Okay, and let's start defining things in the y dimension um, that we know. Now remember that in terms of the initial velocity vector, uh, this thing is v, right? Let's just call it v overall. And therefore, uh, this would be considered the x component of that vector, right? Or v sub x. These would be initial values, obviously. And then the um, vertical display, uh, the vertical velocity here, excuse me, would be considered then the initial in the y. All right? Okay, great. So let's start defining some things. So what's the, um, so in terms of y, remember we're gonna be talking about the y dimension. In terms of the y, uh, what would be the initial velocity in the y direction? In terms of a formula. Well, if I wanna find this, and I know the initial um, velocity vector, right, the resultant vector and this angle, I could do it by taking the sine, right, of that angle. So it'd be the initial velocity times then the sine of theta, great. Um, what about the final velocity? Well, the final velocity in the y direction should be the same, right? The final velocity in the y direction should be the same as the initial because there's symmetry in the problem, therefore just be negative. Uh, be the same in terms of magnitude, I should have said, but opposite in sine. So it's negative vi, a sine of theta. Uh, what else we got here? So we got the change in the displacement, right, of the y uh, distance, essentially. What would that be? Well, if it starts at this height, ends at the same height, the difference between the two would be zero. Okay, so that's an important finding. So this is zero meters. Uh, time, we have no idea, right? That's basically what we're gonna, it says by finding the time at which y becomes zero. So we're gonna uh, leave that in. And uh, the acceleration, right? We know that that's due to gravity. So uh, we could say negative 9.80 meters per second squared, right? Also remember that we can uh, substitute g in for this and that's probably what we're gonna do because there's a g in our equation. All right. So I'm going to use equation number two now, all right? So let's take equation number two, but instead of x, we'll talk about y. So change in y will equal the initial velocity in, uh, of, uh, in the y direction times time plus one half a in the y direction times t squared. Okay, so we know that this is zero. That's great. The initial velocity in the y direction, well, we know it to be this value right here, right? The resultant initial velocity uh, vector times the sine of theta. And that whole thing is now multiplied by time. Okay, great, plus one half times a sub y. But instead of a sub y, what I'm gonna plug in, so remember that a sub y is basically equal to, uh, no, negative a sub y is basically equal, uh, equal to g, right? So in other words, if I were to plug in g for a sub y, I would just have to make this um, this positive sign, sorry, this, turn this positive sign into a negative sign. So that would be minus now, one half g times t squared. Okay, all right, sounds good so far, all, uh, all fine and dandy. So now if I were to rework this formula, right, um, since it's equal to zero, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring this term on over to the other side. So half gt squared. So I'm gonna add half gt squared. That cancels, now I got one over two gt squared, right, is equal to initial velocity times the sine of theta multiplied then by time. But notice I got time on both sides now. I got one t here, two t's here, so I can cross one of them out, right? Now, what I got is I got uh, one half, one half gt, whoop, gt is equal to initial velocity, sorry, initial velocity times the sine of theta. And I wanna get t by itself, okay? So let's get t by itself now. It's because we wanna find the time at which the t uh, is, uh, 
uh, I'm sorry, the fi find the time uh, when y becomes zero. So we got to divide this out by half g. So divide this side out by half of g. So now let's rewrite the result on the left-hand side. So we got t will be equal to initial velocity multiplied by the sine, well, sine of theta, all over now, well, one half g. I'm just gonna write g on the bottom, but I'm gonna put the two on the top, right? Since I'm dividing by a half, it's the same thing as multiplying by two. So I got this. All right, I mean, we're, we're starting to look kind of close, right? To, uh, to what this equation is talking about. We're almost there. Now let's take a look at the initial velocity in the x direction. Let's create a formula uh, from that, right? So we can have, we, we have basically something that looks like this, right? The initial velocity in the x direction will equal um, the initial velocity resultant vector multiplied by cosine, right, of theta now. Okay, great. And uh, don't forget also that since there's no accelerations in the, um, since there's no accelerations in the x frame, right, that means the velocity will always be constant. And therefore, I can also state this, that the average velocity will be equal to the initial velocity in the x frame, which then remember that the average velocity is simply the change in the displacement, right, divided by a time. Okay. So now, what can we do uh, from here? So now what I want to do is I actually would like to now take this term, right, and plug it in for the initial velocity of x. So now I'm going to have x over t, okay, is equal to initial velocity vector multiplied by cosine of theta. All right. Now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to solve this thing for t. So if I solve it for t, I'm going to have something that looks like this. Right, x over initial velocity vector, right, the resultant vector multiplied by cosine of theta is equal to t. Now I'm gonna take this and plug it into my expression here. All right, let's see what happens now. So now we have x, let me put it in red. So now we're gonna have x over initial velocity, right, times the cosine of theta is equal to two times the initial velocity multiplied by the sine of theta all over g. Now remember, I should have, I said it before, but I should have made it a little more clear. In this formula, right, it's the average velocity, I said it was the change in the, the displacement in x, but I didn't write the little delta sign, but I probably should, okay? It'll make it a little more clear. So this is really delta. Now watch, all I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna do a cross multiplication. Let's bring this on up into the numerator on the right-hand side. So now I'm gonna have something like this. Change in x is equal to, uh, this is gonna be two, eh, let me reorganize it this way. It's gonna be initial velocity squared, right? Times then uh, two cosine, oop, two cosine theta, sine theta, all over g. We're really close now. Now here's just the last little trick, okay? You have to know this identity, that this whole thing is like that double angle formula, whatever, um, where I'll write it at the top left, two cosine theta sine theta is the same thing as saying sine of two theta, okay? So now that's gonna be my final substitution. So I'm gonna rewrite everything over here. So change in X, will now be equal to the initial velocity squared multiplied by the sine of two theta all over g. And now remember that the range is just the, simply the change in the x displacement. So now I can just write r is equal to initial velocity squared times the sine of two theta all over g, and there we derived it. Wunderbar. Th guys, thanks for tuning in. Hope this helped. Please remember to subscribe, and I will uh, see you in the next lesson.